and hello and welcome to the third season of the Tom Retro Chronicle. And this is episode 37 of the Tom Retro Chronicle. And as always, I am your host of the Tom Retro Chronicle. Alright, welcome, welcome back. It's been about, at least about two weeks, two to three weeks, give or take since I did last episode. Um, I am taping this on a very sunny, kind of warm, uh, Friday afternoon on August 1st, uh, 2014. Happy August to you all. And, yeah. Um, yeah, episode 37. Pretty, pretty crazy stuff. So, um, yeah, pretty much in this episode, I will be talking about the recent Red Sox trades, um, breaking it down, how I feel about it, and so forth. Um, and then I'm going to talk about, um, uh, the recent Ebola, Ebola outbreak in uh, West Africa, which I uh, kind of need to know about that, because I'm sure some people are like, what is Ebola? What is the Ebola virus? And all that good stuff. Because um, it's been on the news for the past week, two weeks, something like that. So, And then I'll be talking about um, a game that I have been recently playing for the last good week, um, The Elder Scrolls IV uh, Bolivian. So I'll be talking about that. And uh, yeah. So uh, let's uh, get started on this episode. And yeah. Um, so what pretty much is pretty much essentially rebuilding part two for the Red Sox. Um, pretty much as you know, the f pretty much the first one was back in 2012 when pretty much the Red Sox traded with the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, pretty much the Red Sox gave up Josh Beckett, um, Adrian Gonzalez, uh, Carl Crawford to the Dodgers for uh, some of their players. And that was essentially one of the biggest salary dumps in baseball history and certainly one of the biggest trades in North American history, at least in the four professional sports of uh, North America. Um, so, yeah. And pretty much, we didn't really have to do anything last year because we were actually doing pretty good. We were pretty doing pretty good in the season, and we eventually became world champions, winning our eighth World Series title as a franchise. And then, <laughs> and then this happens. Pretty much, essentially. Essentially, if you didn't really hear already, the essentially the Red Sox pretty much gave um, John Lester, uh, Johnny Gomes, and sent them to uh, the Oakland Athletics for Johannes Cespedes. So we got ourselves a a bat for our lineup that desperately needs offense, you know. Um, I've always liked John Lester. He was he was definitely one of the he was definitely one of the better um, one of the better uh, pitchers that we've had in the last oh, at least in the last seven, eight years. I mean, he's been pretty much an ace on our staff. And pretty much, I could get I could get some sort of sense with the trade, but but the whole John Lackey 
going to the Cardinals for Alan Craig and um, Kelly from the Cardinals. Uh, that one just kind of really baffles me, kind of. You know, it's just like, really, we really need to get rid of most of our pitching staff to to trades. I'm, I'm, I don't know. As much as I want to believe that Ben Sherrington and the rest of the front office knows what they're doing, but the season's been kind of a lost cause. Not just because of the injuries, injuries to our star players, but essentially is this, I don't know, Oh, I actually wrote this in a tweet that our recent um, um, stretch of division divisional games was pretty much pivotal for us to actually make it back to make it back to the playoffs, and and essentially, essentially, if I can try to pull this up here. Um, uh, we are basically from July 21st to pretty much today, pretty much we've won two games out of, two out of eight. We've, we haven't been playing that good. <laughs> we haven't been playing that good baseball right now. I mean, we swept the, the Royals, and I thought, okay, I, I think we could possibly get back, get back into the divisional race and try to make a run. But, but I don't know, that 14-1 to game on the 21st of July and I thought, hey, you know what? We're going to come back from this thing. You know? And I actually uh, sent an Instagram photo on the current schedule as it was. And and pretty much, uh, yeah, pretty much we lost the three remaining games uh, to the Blue Jays. And we lost... Two of three against the Rays, and pretty much the Blue Jays swept us at home, and it just, it just kind of put a real sour taste in pretty much every Red Sox fan's mouth. It's just, it just kind of, it just kind of went sour for us, you know. So, I don't know. I'm not trying to say that I'm I'm not trying to say that it's a lost cause for this season, but it wouldn't hurt to really start thinking about twenty fifteen, you know. But what can you do? What can you do? Um certainly there are some other better teams out there in the American League that can certainly win the pennants and possibly win the World Series. Pretty much the Tigers um, got a pitcher in um, uh, David Price in exchange for some of the Tigers um, um, prospects and players. Um, and then the A's pretty much have the Athletics have pretty much won the best starting rotations pretty much in the American League and I'd probably say the Tigers have the best but the can't really rule out the athletics um, starting rotation that's it it's actually a pretty good rotation if those two meet in the playoffs for pretty much like the third time in a row that would be quite the that would be quite the pitching duel. 
uh, between those teams, which I'm pretty sure is going to happen. So, but um, yeah. So pretty much, I can only see the Tigers pretty much making out out of the AL Central. It's probably going to be um, the Athletics and the Angels coming out of the West. Um, probably the probably whoever is going to win the East is probably not really going to make it too far. It's probably not going to make it too far into the postseason, but. Um, See, looking at the so pretty much as of right now, the Orioles look to be pretty much gaining um, pretty much the home field advantage throughout the American League playoffs. Um, Detroit and Oakland is pretty much looking to get into that, and yeah, it looks like the Angels and the Blue Jays will make it to the wild card. Wild card game. Um, looking at the National League, pretty much looks like it's pretty much a dead heap between the Nationals, the Brewers, and the Dodgers. And pretty much the wild card is kind of also up for grabs, pretty much. Um, pretty much the Giants look to get, look to have that fourth spot and it's pretty much a tie between the Cardinals and the Braves for that sixth or that fifth excuse me that uh, fifth ball card spot so if the season ended today pretty much the Cardinals and the Braves would enter into a one game playoff just to determine the wild card spot and then they would have to play another game to determine who gets the fifth and final uh, wild card spot for that, or excuse me, the fourth, fourth spot. So, um, yeah. So looking into August, pretty much for the Red Sox, pretty much we have three game, three game series at home against the Yankees. Pretty much we go on the road against the Cardinals, the Angels, and then we play at Cincinnati for two game series with the Reds, and then a four game series against Houston at home, against the Angels and the Mariners, and pretty much and then pretty much we finish the month off at Toronto and at at um, uh, Tampa Bay. So definitely a very long stretch of, and pretty much our schedule kind of gets a little bit more tougher as we kind of get it along into August. So, so it could be a very interesting postseason without the Red Sox being in it. But will I still be watching playoffs? Probably. Because I kind of like baseball. <laughs> it's actually been a pretty good season. Don't get me wrong. It's been a pretty good season for for baseball. Um, and hopefully we'll get to be uh, better next season for the Red Sox. But, um, so, yeah. Um... So uh, another topic I'd like to get into is um, the Ebola outbreak that has been happening in West Africa. And essentially this current one is pretty much happening in Guinea, uh, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Nigeria. And this one's been pretty much happening as of right now, at least uh, it's been happening for at least a good couple weeks. I suppose pretty much the only biggest reason why it's in the news because there are, are two people coming back to the states uh, to get treated in a Atlanta hospital, and it could be a very interesting, could be a very interesting thing. Um, so. 
So here are some stats for you to look at. Um, as of right now, there are pretty much 730 deaths out of 1,323 uh, reported cases, and that is pretty much a uh, case fatality risk of 55.1%. So definitely not quite good numbers there. So essentially, so essentially, why is it happening in West Africa? Well, essentially, so essentially, Africa is not exactly the most developed um, continents in the world. Certainly, the lack of um, hospitals, uh, medical treatment, um, medical services, pretty much in that region, are pretty much the biggest thing that is um, to blame. Um, so how can you exactly get Ebola? Well, pretty much essentially essentially how you can get Ebola is not pretty much by transmitted by airborne particles, but essentially by being in contact with someone's blood or bodily fluids like like, like if someone else's blood get in, gets into your blood, then that could be pretty much, oh, definitely, I've been definitely a good risk for Ebola. Um, how can you, uh, how you, so that's how you pretty much can get it. Um, pretty much the symptoms are essentially um, flu-like symptoms, um, including fever, um, uh, I'd say a very high fever essentially. Um, uh, intense weakness, so if you essentially um, feel extremely weak, um, like you can't really get out of bed, or you find it hard to walk around and stuff. Uh, muscle pain, um, I imagine pretty intense muscle pain. Uh, headache and sore throat. And essentially, it becomes followed by vomiting, diarrhea, rash, impaired kidney, and liver function. And certainly, it becomes the case of sometimes internal and external bleeding. And that's pretty much how it can be spread. So, pretty interesting stuff. And and essentially, if you do come in contact with someone else's blood, whether it be an animal or another person, your basically your survival rate is very, very slim to very low. Uh, pretty much according to the World Health Organization's page, pretty much, um, it's pretty much a survive. Uh, survival rate of 60 to 90 percent of people who develop uh, the Ebola virus pretty much die, will die from the disease. So pretty crazy stuff. So <laughs> actually a lot of a lot of people are thinking, oh my god, this is The Walking Dead, oh my god, this is totally going to happen. This is, this is just like the line of, of The Walking Dead, because The Walking Dead was the TV show, and the, I think the graphic novel came, uh, was pretty much set around uh, Atlanta, Georgia, so pretty much people are thinking, oh my god, it's going to happen, oh my god, oh no. So, um, yeah, and pretty much how Ebola kind of came into existence was in 1976, where there were basically two um, uh, outbreaks in Nazara, Sudan, and Yambuku, uh, which is pretty much now the uh, the DRC. Um, the Democratic Republic of Congo, 
uh, which is formerly known as Zaire. And pretty much, pretty much how it got its name was from the river, the Ebola River. And so that's that. Um, so that could be a very interesting thing that will be, that will have to be definitely looked at um, in the coming weeks. So very interesting stuff. So if you're thinking about going to Africa, and in particular, uh, West Africa, you might want to consider changing your plans. So, yeah. Uh, very interesting stuff. So, And pretty much the last thing I kind of want to talk about is um, my sort of um, addiction to um, the uh, the video game, the Elder Scrolls Oblivion game, and I'd have to say it's actually pretty. It's actually a pretty good game. I actually really enjoy. Actually, really enjoy um, playing it. You know. So it's actually it's. It's basically the same thing as, it's basically the same thing as Skyrim, except for um, less less than great graphics. Um, uh, the physics is a bit different. The the faces look look really really <laughs> really dated, um, but essentially it's still still a pretty good game. It's it's essentially Skyrim without the the HD graphics, the um, the advanced physics of the game, um, and pretty much this game pretty much first came out March of 2006 when I was a when I was a junior in high school. And that's how long ago it was. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. And it pretty much first came out on the PC and Xbox 360 uh, in 2006, and then the and then the PlayStation 3 uh, version came out a year later in 2007 March. So and then then there were two DLCs that came out for the game: the Shivering Isles, and then. Uh, Knights of the Nine, so pretty good stuff there. Essentially, it's it's different. It's it's really really different. Um, you know, in Skyrim, pretty much it's essentially character creation is kind of a bit more open. I'd say a bit more open. Like, like essentially, if you're trying to build like a mage or a battle mage, you could definitely do that without having to work that hard. Like, if you want to be more than just a battle mage, you can definitely do it. Like, if you want to be a battle mage warrior, Or you could basically become a warrior without really too much worrying about it. So it's a bit more open, a bit more open, a lot less complicated <laughs> character creation. Um, in Oblivion, pretty much you kind of have to stick to the character that you want to create. So if you want to become, um, if you want to become assassin, pretty much which which is what I am um, in my character. Pretty much you kind of have to stick with it. So essentially you kind of have to stay with your class. Uh, in Skyrim you don't really have to have a class. You're pretty much your own kind of character. And I don't know, to me I kind of like that. But does that make Oblivion Oblivion 
a really bad game. No, definitely not. It's um, another thing that I kind of really um, I don't know. If, I'm trying to think of other things that kind of threw me off with Oblivion as Skyrim. Um, um, other than the graphics and the character creation thing, it's actually a really good game. Um, in terms of story-wise, I'd say Oblivion is a bit more stronger than Skyrim. It's a bit more... Because in Skyrim, pretty much you have to deal with um, um, the civil war between the Imperial Imperial Legion and the Stormcloak Rebellion. Uh, then, And then you have the dragons coming back and then trying to defeat Alduin, uh, the Master Dragon. So essentially it's pretty interesting stuff and then pretty much with Oblivion pretty much all you have to do for the main quest is to um, um, basically to defeat the Mythic Dawn and send um, uh, Meherun's Dagon um, the pretty much the head honcho of the pretty much the big antagonist of Oblivion. Um, he essentially is a Daedric um, prince who pretty much wants to destroy pretty much all of Tamriel, uh, throw it into darkness. Um, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Um, so personally, story-wise, I think Oblivion's a bit more stronger than Skyrim. Um, actually, I kind of like the quests, too, in Oblivion. Um, I don't know. In terms of, in terms of if you had to, if you made me want to choose between the two games, I'd still have to go with Skyrim. But, in my opinion, that's just me, but... But I've been having a lot, quite a bit of fun playing with Oblivion. It's actually kind of a pretty cool game. So, um, so um, I think that should pretty much do it for this episode of the Tom Retro Chronicle. Uh, pretty much today I had the day off from work. Um, so a pretty good time there. And pretty much the next three days, I will be doing overnight price changes shifts. Uh, pretty much trying to get rid of the rest of their. Um, pretty much trying to get rid of the rest of their summer stuff and and get ready for back to school. Which now quite a few people are getting ready to do. And then pretty much, then pretty much after. Um, Monday, Monday night into Tuesday morning, I'll be done with it. Pretty much after 7 a.m. on Tuesday, I'll be done with it. And then I will be basically going back to Dayside on Wednesday the 6th, and I think pretty much that's pretty much, it's going to be either Tuesday or Wednesday that I will do another episode. So, uh, Stay tuned for that, and I will be probably seeing you all probably sometime on Tuesday or Wednesday. So until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend. If you find uh, my channel to be quite good, um, feel free to give me a subscribe. If you like the video, uh, feel free to give me a like and a comment telling how much you like it or or if you really hate it, um, go ahead and do it anyway, because I favor opinions that much. So I will see you all next week. Peace.